Well, it's 5.45 p.m. Eastern time here in Brattleboro, which means it's time for another live broadcast from BCTV's 230 Main Street Rooftop Studios. We've dubbed it a media roundup. We do it at week's end each Friday. We call it 5.45 Live. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyden, and I'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes when you can switch over to the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock World News. On deck tonight for 5.45 Live, we'll talk about a pedestrian auto accident that closed sections of Putney Road yesterday. We'll also talk about the latest Brattleboro Hinsdale Bridge Rebuild Project meetings. Uh, there was one in Hinsdale this week, and we'll get the video from Voices Live, the Commons post-nuclear economy panel forum at the Herker Dunham last week. Plus, there was a fire in Newfane and plenty other headlines to supplement it. We'll throw the calendar in there as well. So it'll be a jam-packed edition if you've got the time and the attention span to give us. Take a look. It's 545 Live. Back to this September 27th, 2013 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden, tonight's host. I'll take you through the next 15 minutes as we uh, break down the headlines, get all the latest web releases, and a week's worth of video from here at BCTV. We'll start, though, by checking in with uh, the Reformers official website, reformer.com, and their Tout channel, tout.com slash bratreformer, where reporters can now upload videos uh, on the go from the field as they report. And that's uh, where we're going to start here as we launch into the split screen. And we're going to talk a little bit about the pedestrian accident on Putney Road in Brattleboro. Uh, this was uh, last night. And witnesses uh, reported that uh, there was a blue Subaru that struck a man uh, by America's Best. Now, an eyewitness told the paper that EMTs happened to be driving past the scene as it happened. We're, we're able to provide immediate assistance. And uh, while well, the man who had been struck by the vehicle had visible wounds, he uh, appeared to be alert as officials talked with him. Uh, Brattleboro police are investigating. They did have to close a section of the road by Black Mountain Road, but it has been reopened. Again, tout.com slash bratreformer if you want to find out more. We'll check back in there in a minute to talk about a fire in Newfane. But first, as we talk road closings, uh, flash flooding now two weeks prior closed a section of Elm Street, the bridge that connected Canal and Frost, in fact, and it's been closed ever since. But hard work on the part of the Department of Public Works will yield uh, a bridge open there once more. And hardworking BCTV volunteer Maria Dominguez was on the scene to gather some clips and interviews as uh, the bridge has its uh, life restored. Let's take a look. Wow. And we're working on Elm Street with, uh, in conjunction with uh, Renault Brothers. Mm -hmm. um, we've got to do some work on the bridge abutment, get some two-foot riprap near the bridge abutment to stabilize that. We're redecking the bridge because it got undermined the water undermined the asphalt and did some damage, so we're cleaning off the deck. All right, as promised, we'll follow up now uh, at tout.com slash bratreformer. Don't even need the old bro. And take a look at a fire in Newfane, courtesy of the uh, reporter Chris Mays. We'll take a look at the video. Firefighters from several towns are putting out a house fire on Newfane Hill Road in Newfane. Again, tout.com slash bratreformer. As we move on now on this full edition of 545 Live, we'll check in with another newspaper in town, Brattleboro's independent newspaper and media source, The Commons, who've taken their voices section to the streets of town and the venues uh, with Voices Live. I hosted an open forum under this heading to talk post-nuclear economy, a hot topic since Energy Nuclear Vermont Yankee announced their plans to voluntarily close the highly controversial lone nuclear plant uh, in Vermont in Vernon, uh, effective quarter four of this coming year, 2014. The Commons impaneled six uh, members of the public to discuss uh, this topic for an open forum that drew the attention of hardworking BCTV volunteer Maria Dominguez and documentary filmmaker Robbie Lepser, who's tracking the pro uh, anti vermont Yankee protest movement in the area and the plants and their owners' subsequent moves. Now, uh, we've put all this together into a full broadcast that will show all next week on BCTV Channel 8 under the Commons Voices live heading, uh, but it's also available at brattleboro.tv.org to stream right now as part of our video on demand, or you can watch the 545 live clip in 30-second version right now. We don't know that this evening. We won't know that for another 18 months because there will be people that will be retained at the plant 
until such time as the power goes off. And then there'll still be a security force and a, a uh, crew to monitor the plant. So 18 months from now, we'll have a better idea what the picture is, but in between, we need to be planning. <coughs> Moving on, we'll talk red. The Regional Education District plans afoot in the Wyndham Central Supervisory Union to consolidate all the K through 12 school boards into one uh, overall governing body, which would uh, see representatives from each town join together to form a lone board uh, throughout the district. Now, this went to the state for approval earlier this month, but a key factor, key component of the proposed plan, which would allow uh, representatives from smaller towns to demand a one town, one rep vote system in certain circumstances where they felt uh, they were being underrepresented, uh, has caught the state's attention as uh, something they just can't approve. So. Uh, it's back to the committee for the uh, members of uh, the area trying to get the red district implemented. But a series of open forums hosted to discuss with the community the proposed changes are going forward. One of them was this week, which has prompted our field producer, Rich Melanson, to head out and get video as well. Let's take a look. There, is a, there may be a perception that the WCED structure might be somehow less responsive to individual community member concerns or requests. Um, and there, there could also be concerns that the shifting of teachers among the, the larger district um, to meet enrollment or student needs could, could be disruptive. We could, we could make a pretty good list of some of the benefits uh, that have happened uh, because of this, you know, of the creation of Newbrook Elementary School, you know, and how that's increased various opportunities for kids in New Fan Brook Life. It's been kind of a rocky road in these last few weeks, as I think maybe you have read about. And we'll do a little explaining about that as time goes on. Transition Putney joined forces this past week with the Putney Food Co-op to present an open forum on hunger in our community, a devastating topic and one that Wyndham County is no stranger to. Uh, it was thanks to Sovernet and their Fiber Connect project, which, which has brought in uh, incredibly high-speed internet all up and down the West River Valley, including to the Putney Library, that BCTV was able to stream this forum live in crisp high definition uh, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash TV, and uh, bring uh, all the happenings and talks from this forum uh, to our channel and YouTube channel subscribers uh, that night and subsequently uh, from there on our video on demand. Let's take a look. All of the programs that we run, we always, um, we definitely want to include as many community members as possible, and so we accept EBT, the electronic benefit transfer. So it's just an important thing to note that families, although they may be able to afford to buy food, they may not always have access to this local food. And so being able to buy local, fresh local food right from the farm with your, your state benefits from your EBT, is a really incredible benefit to families. And so we're really excited to be able to offer that to Putney this year. And as we wrap up our State House report, we'll check in with the official YouTube channel of Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin at youtube.com slash vtgovernor. He's been using Google Hangout as well to broadcast his uh, press conferences in Full HD Online Live. And uh, in his latest post, he announced a new education secretary for the Green Mountain State, Rebecca Holcomb. Talked a little bit about her credentials here on this post. It has been through a long process, but we are thrilled to announce that Rebecca Holcomb will be the next Secretary of the Department of Education. Well, that about sums it up here for the headlines on 545 Live. But before we let you go, we'll check in with our calendar, courtesy of our new BCTV web special, our interactive online video calendar, which is hosted by none other than one Roland Boyden. Uh, who happens to uh, get in front of the big screen and uh, talk a little bit about upcoming events with an interactive interface that allows you to click through to websites and things like that. It's released each Thursday at youtube.com. He'll tell you all this, so I'll just uh, turn it over to him. But there's a bevy of events coming up this weekend worth noting, so check it out. Next up on the calendar, it's a jam-packed weekend for Next Stage Arts with 7.30 p.m. performances this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with Archer Mayer, Putney Vaudeville, and Fish Tank Ensemble. Again, uh, those each kick off at 7.30 p.m. in their downtown Putney performance space, 15 Kimball Hill Road. Uh, it's across from the Putney General Store. For uh, more information, you can click here to visit their official website or take a look at our video spotlight right now. In September, we have a range of things from the return of Putney Vaudeville, which was a rollicking success last spring. We love 
having people come from Brattleboro, a short 10 minutes up the highway to exit four and um, make a night of it in Putney. And it's a big weekend for Brattleboro West Arts as well as they kick off their fifth annual open studio tour, which runs from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. both Saturday and Sunday in West Brat. You can see uh, glass blowing demonstrations. There's even a local Vore meal hosted at the Chelsea Royal Diner. All the details are on the website, so you can click here to find out how to get involved or watch the video spotlight right now. Things one has made with wakened hands and put soft life into are awake through years with transferred touch. From our hands to yours, the annual Brattleboro West Arts Open Studio Tour. There you go. That sums it up for another 15-minute broadcast of 545 Live. Thanks for checking in. But remember, we'll be back all next week with a series of web releases at youtube.com slash TV and brattleborotv.org. And then we'll head back to the channel right here on BCTV Comcast Channel 8 for another live 15-minute broadcast at week's end. That'll be next Friday at 5.45 p.m. In the meantime, stay safe out there. Uh, check us out at youtube.com slash brattleborotv, brattleborotv.org, and facebook.com slash bctv.brattleboro if you want to subscribe and get all the latest happenings. Thanks for watching.